if you have a beginner's eye and need to look at confirmation, what's the first thing a vet will look at for soundness? Ooh. This sounds like an easy question. It is not. <laughs> because um, there's no place there's more jargon than confirmation. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, you and I could do a speed round of confirmation like like sickle hocked and cow hocked and calf kneed and this and that. And the, the, I remember years and years ago going to the AAEP annual convention and there was a talk on confirmation and its effect on soundness. Like, and it was specifically, what things do you see, angles and length and slopes and that, that are actually real? Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of shot holes in my whole, everything I believed in. So what do you mean when you say what's actually real? Well, so we, we hear things like um, uh, horses with long sloping pasterns, maybe not a good thing. Mm -hmm. It actually turns out ideal would be medium length, medium slope. Mm -hmm. Long sloping pasterns are not bad. You'd rather have, I don't know, Hold on to your stool. <laughs> You'd rather have a long sloping pastern than a short upright pastern. Okay. Everyone that I could see agreed short upright pasterns are not good, both for the soundness and the longevity. So it, it the concussive forces that your horse is undergoing in, in a short upright pastern tend to um, concentrate in that pastern area, mm. in the fetlock, in the even in the foot and they um, set the horse up for like a ring bone, okay. arthritis all down that, yep. that short bone to the leg. Um, and the thinking was a long sloping pastern set your horse up for like a bowed tendon or a pole dispensary. Mm -hmm. Doesn't. It's actually protective. So Blew my mind I know. first thing this morning. I know, but um, if you start at the bottom, Everyone agreed the, the foot's the foundation, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of, lot of um, research and evidence-based medicine on the foot. And, and it turns out that the long toe, low heel yep. is the worst foot confirmation. Okay. And yeah. the one that you should avoid. Okay. Because it said there are a multitude of problems associated with that, not just one. Yep. It sets the horse up for lots of things to go wrong. But um, navicular or caudal heel syndrome was one of them because when you have a, a long toe way out in front and a low heel, the and you use like a plumb line from mm -hmm. the horse because we know most of their weight goes on their forehand, it puts 75% of the horse's weight on the heel. Mm -hmm. And those structures just cannot tolerate that. Well, so I ride stock horses, which navicular is very common mm -hmm. in. And so that is something we usually look at is how is their toe? Do they have a long toe, low heel situation? Good. Okay. Because okay. we know that that is something stock horses, unfortunately, can well, be. Well, and quarter horses specifically, and possibly mm -hmm. stock horses, not that they're bred for small feet, but they tend to have, mm -hmm. in proportion of their, their size and, and, and weight, small feet mm -hmm. and small feet also not good okay we want dinner plates big <laughs> well, no flat feet not good okay yeah um, you know club foot came up in the in the paper and and as long as it's not a, a severe club foot then it it wasn't that bad of a problem and i had kind of always stayed away from a club foot mm -hmm. in fact i'm horse shopping now and i saw a club foot i saw a club foot and i walked away and i saw a Long toe, low heel, and I walked away. Yep, smart. So, uh, you know, I'm glad. I'm glad. This is actually a perfect topic for you since I you are horse shopping. I know, I know. Let me see what else I found. We talked about the feet and the pasterns and the foot. Oh, there's this myth out there about you're supposed to have a short cannon bone. Yeah. Have you heard that? I have heard that. And that's not true. That the, no impact whatsoever. No. Okay. Um, so in the hawk, when you look at the horse on the side, a sickle hawk means they come down and the back of the pasture, instead of being like horizontal, mm -hmm. is sloping this way. Yeah. Like that's the front of the horse, sorry. <laughs> we, we, need a, we need a horse here. Um, and sickle hawks do make horses a little bit prone to a curb, but they're not, I mean, if it's not a bad sickle hawk, it's not something to walk away from. So okay. note to self. So sickle hawk, you can still you explore. You can live with it if it's not <laughs> terrible. And the, the um, horse that is post-legged, so do you know what that, so much jargon. 
it, when a horse doesn't have much bend in the hindquarters, that the it's leg like is fairly like straight. straight yeah, like there isn't much bend in the hock. Um, those horses are set up for a uh, uh, hind suspensory mm. issue. So if it's if it's a, a severe post-legged horse, then Maybe that might not be a good away. choice. Yeah. Um, so we, oh, one more. You've seen or heard of a hunter's bump? Yeah. Okay. So it's a it's a bump in the, <laughs> in the croup of a horse right where the, the top of the pelvis is. I was gonna try to help you out and explain it, but Can I was you? like, well, so if you look towards like the back of the yeah. horse, you do see like this little extra bump. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, and it can be on one side or both. Yeah. And I always thought, I was told it was an injury mm -hmm. uh, between the, the ligaments of that uh, part of the pelvis, the tuber sacrali, and the, the spine itself where it attaches, the sacrum. It's not <laughs> one one of, one of the people said. We're it's debunking a, myths all over the I place know, here. I know, and not helping her at all. But one of the people said it's actually a beauty mark, not a defect. Really? Well, mm -hmm. look at that. You, mm -hmm. you were walking away from all these horses, mm -hmm. and it's just a beauty mark all I know, along. I know. So, talk to your vet. But I, I would also do some reading mm -hmm. at a reputable source because you're going to have to count on yourself to be like, what's good, confirmation, what's okay, doesn't matter, and what is legitimately a problem. You can also probably manage like what your goals are with the oh, horse. Oh, that's the other thing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> it, um, a horse's confirmation, like what might be bad in one discipline, say racing, mm -hmm. is okay or in fact good in another dis discipline. Yeah. So even if you stick with English, what jumper's like and what a dressage horse is gonna, how he's gonna look to excel can be quite different. And then your Western disciplines, mm -hmm. um, what a, what a rainer might do okay with or need to function at his peak is not what a, a Western pleasure horse needs. So it is, is absolutely discipline specific, thank you. Absolutely, so basically we look at feet, see how that's set up, yeah. hawks after that. Well, kind of just work at. up the limbs. Because okay. it's feet and then it's limbs. There was a little discussion about sloping shoulder, and the thing with that was because you've heard, oh, sloping shoulder. Yes. Well, when when they looked at it, everybody measures it from a different <laughs> place, and I'm like, so there's no um, agreed upon definition of sloping, sloping shoulder. shoulder.